How do professionals find information online? How can this be helpful to your future career? Here we have advice from professors to help you find reliable information. INO defines digital information literacy as the ability to find, evaluate, create and communicate information effectively and responsibly using the appropriate technology. INO teaches students digital information literacy skills to help prepare them to navigate the future of digital information. In these videos, our INO professors tell us how they relate the importance of finding and evaluating information to their profession. This is INO Insights, faculty discuss information literacy in the professional sphere. The majority of students go into law enforcement, uh, Corpus Christi Police Department. We have a lot of Corpus Christi Police Department alum. Border Patrol is also a large department that gets our students. Um, but a lot of students are starting to gravitate more toward federal uh, positions. So we have a lot that are going into FBI. We have some going into Texas Game Warden Service. So it varies wildly. But the one thing that is true of all of those positions is that they're going to have to be effective writers, communicators, and also information seekers. And so this skill set is vital for them as a future CJ professional. Criminal justice in particular, it requires information to be reliable and especially trustworthy. And in large part, that's because students in the criminal justice field, they're gonna to have to develop that skill set to find trustworthy information so that we can preserve the integrity of our criminal justice system, and they're a part of that. I call it the triple T. So in large part, I tell students, you need to be able to find trustworthy, tested, and true information. And that can be really daunting for students because as of right now, my phone's not with me, but at a touch of a button, I think we're all drowning in information. And so they need to be able to find accessible information that is tried, tested, and true, the triple T, and be able to have that information offered not just within law enforcement but within the legal system because we have burdens of proof and the legal system needs to be able to ensure that that information that that criminal justice professional is offering is accessible tried tested true and they need to be able to evaluate that on the front end so that way the system can operate efficiently You know, there's that old adage, practice makes perfect. They've got to practice. If they don't practice, that skill set is never going to develop. You know, you look at a major league baseball player, they have thousands of hours of practice and they are good because of that. So it would be kind of cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs for us to have a CJ professional get out into the real world and then say, okay, find really good, reliable, accessible, relevant information and then have no experience doing that. So in order to gain that skill set, we, uh, and I say we, the collective we as professors, have to give them that experience so that they can harness that skill set and become more confident. Because I think, you know, it's intimidating to research, especially if you don't know how to research, but students will become more comfortable with it and gain that skill set with more practice, more guidance, more mentorship. And so this is perfect for them to gain that confidence level as they move forward. The name of the game now is that they have again, that experience and comfort navigating online journals. And I want to emphasize that the first time that I delve into this topic with students, I let them just free, freely research. I say, let's talk about, and I'll give them a, a topic to talk about. So I'll talk about some uh, sexual assaults. And I say, how many sexual assaults happened last year? 
And so when I first introduce this, they're looking all over the place. And usually it's either Wikipedia or they'll turn to some blog, right? Those are the two top responses. But after I walk through the databases that exist, again, Uniform Crime Report, uh, National Incident-Based Reporting System, National Victimization Survey, and tell them those are databases that are available. But there's also this other world of peer-reviewed articles. And it was interesting because when I initially talked about peer review, all of them would nod their head. And I, and I initially thought, oh, they know what that is. That's great. And I was really excited. I was like, they're good. But then I realized they were nodding their head, but they had no clue what a peer reviewed article was. And so I actually sat them down and this took about two class periods to do. And I walked them through what my, myself and a colleague had gone through in submitting our articles for peer review and talking about the rigorous process that it takes that you're actually getting evaluated by top experts in your field to determine whether or not your methodology was correct, if your literature review is accurate, all of those things that again ensure that triple T, whether or not your information is tested, tried and true. And if you're able to meet those bars, then ding, you're through the finish line and it's peer reviewed and it's beautiful, right? But it's not easy and it shouldn't be easy. And so that instills with them the knowledge that there's this pyramid of information that's out there. And at the bottom, at the bottom of the barrel is social media type stuff, right? Which I say disregard, throw it away. But as you move up that tier of the pyramid, at the top is peer review. And that's a beautiful source of information that they can use and it can lead them to further information or new databases that they didn't know existed. So we usually spend about two weeks actually going through and I give them prompts with each class. So I say, today we're gonna cover sexual assault rates. and then and the next time period, I'll look at you know a new uh, offense category, and they have to look through it, and it helps them again become more comfortable. And I really think that that's key because if a student understands the tools that they have to navigate this huge world of information that exists out there, because again, we at the touch of a button can look at something and get a million results which nobody has time to look through. I mean, that's insane. So to make them calm down, you know, feel zen and feel comfortable navigating that world, um, they have to be exposed to those tools and be given the opportunity to try out those tools and write. So I think it's a double endeavor. They have to be comfortable researching, but also knowing how to turn that research they've discovered and write about it. And so that takes time. And I honestly don't feel like it's a, even a semester's worth of a job for CJ majors in particular, and that their information is so valuable. It can mean somebody's freedom ultimately at one point. So they have to be darn sure that the information that they're representing to the world is accurate. And so I really pound that into their heads throughout the semester to really value not only their information gathering skills, but also the integrity of the system and why we're at the point today where police legitimacy is indeed in question and understanding why it's our job to always have it at the highest standard moving forward so that way we can gain that police legitimacy and trust within society.